All right, everyone, without further ado, we're ready for Mass Effect 2, any percent new game plus by Demonic Robots. Take it away. All right. Hey there, everybody. My name is Demonic Robots and welcome to Mass Effect 2. Um, if you haven't heard of this game, well, you've been living under a rock. But basically, uh, this is a sci-fi third-person shooter RPG by BioWare. And um, it's a very cool speed run. So I'm just going to get set up here. Just pulling up my notes right now. Um, but basically, uh, we are going to be starting out a little bit further into the game than most people would expect. So normally, this game has a really long intro where you have to, like... Uh, basically like it, it closes the gap between mass effect one and two but essentially um shepherds a ship is attacked he dies or she dies depending on your gender choice and then you wake up on the lazarus station so we're going to get started right here right now we uh have a preloaded save that's going to be right after we wake up from surgery and um we are going to get started so time is going to start on the first input so if we're going to get ready for that i'll do a little countdown three two one go so this is a really fast paced speed run i'm going to be trying to explain everything as best as i can while we're going along um this opening area is the uh, lazarus station basically what happened is shepherd actually died but thanks to some uh, very expensive surgeries and cyber med cybernetics we were uh, brought back by a fringe group called cerberus so we're technically no longer a alliance soldier and that is gonna be the main part about this game uh, you just saw me do a little trick right there that was called a elevator whenever you rub up against collision in a specific way the game kind of doesn't really know where to properly place you so you end up getting placed on top of the object and this is really good because it will actually push us up forward that was a small one however um, there's gonna be some bigger elevators later on um, you're also gonna be seeing me uh, get through dialogue really fast like that um, that's going to be a super common thing that's going to be happening. But basically, uh, we have a little macro which allows us to skip through dialogue really quickly. Um, choices in the game for the dialogue don't really matter too much. There's a couple places where it does, but um, it's not a thing that is very common. Um, you're also going to be seeing me pause whenever I am using my charge ability. So we're playing as the Vanguard class. Um, in the game, you have a lot of different classes that you can play as. We play as Vanguard for the charge ability, which basically lets us teleport towards enemies and is like one of the like most broken powers. That's it. Let's get out of here. We're going to do some more of this. Yeah, and basically we're trying to get to the end here. This is actually like one of the biggest RNG sections of the entire game. There's a lot of stuff that can change. Um, sometimes you will get stunned by enemies when you charge over to them. But it looks like we actually had pretty decent luck. Just got to shoot these guys over here. And we are good to go. That is the first level. So there's going to be a lot of lore stuff going on. This game is, you know, a story-driven RPG. I'm going to be trying to avoid um, major spoilers as best as I can. But of course, I'm not going to be able to do that completely. So if you haven't played this game, I would highly recommend it. Um, I'm not a big RPG guy and it's still one of my favorite games of all time. But we're going to be heading over to a place called Freedom's Progress. This is a human colony that um, essentially everybody in it is missing. And that's a very big problem for, uh, you know, obvious reasons. But basically, there's a lot of people going missing and we're not really too sure why. But we know it has to do with something that's a very present threat in the Mass Effect universe called the Reapers. But really quick, we're going to do an out of bounds here. So this is another elevator sequence. Um, as you can see, we can do a lot of uh, out-of-bounds stuff right here. So, we're going to be setting that up. This is like one of the bigger out-of-bounds actually, but it's like really cool. So, we're going to be getting over here. Uh, this is normally the area that you reunite with Tally when your companions from the first game, and you get some more lore stuff going on, but we're going to kind of just skip all of that. Um, you're also going to see oh me lay down. The collision in this game is really weird. You don't have a jump button because the game doesn't really expect you to be jumping over anything. So because of that, whenever you're like trying to like climb down something, it's a little bit harder to do so. Oh, wow. I just saw a donation. I got to cut in. Yep. $100 from Karyu. Thank you so, so much, by the way. Comment says, I'm hyped to be in this marathon and hope to... Uh, I hope people enjoy the marathon and Project Zero Six Gaming that went towards the finale, the Metroid Randomizer bid war. 
$100 towards Metroid Dread, which rockets it into the lead with 105 total. Thank you so, so much. Back to yep. you, Demonic. Thank you so much. So we're going to be doing something right here. So Tally is in that room, and we're actually going to shoot her just a couple of times. Um, she's fine. Basically, what happens is that we'll actually skip a small little unskippable cutscene if she is dead or uh, quote unquote dead. She's not actually, but, you know, because we knock her unconscious, the game doesn't really know what to do. So it just advances through the dialogue super, super fast, which is really nice. Um, it, it, we just found this like very recently, and it's actually like a uh, pretty big save. But now that we've done that, we have uh, headed kind of out of the tutorial missions, and now we're heading to the actual main gameplay mechanic. So right now, um, this first half of the run is going to be pretty much the same, like in every single category. We're basically going to be recruiting all of our um, companions that we're going to be using. We do get a couple more um, afterwards, but not too many. But first, we have another little skip. So this is another um, recent one that was found out. But basically, if we come over here... We're gonna rub up against this railing, and that lets us cl uh, clip out of bounds. So, right now we are heading over to talk to a person uh, to recruit a person named Morden. Morden is a scientist who is a Solarian that's kind of a genius, and he's gonna help us um, find a way to uh, get around something called a Seeker Swarm. So we learned that the Collectors are a kind of you know, boogeyman race where nobody really thinks that they exist, but they do, and they're stealing people from uh, human colonies for nefarious purposes. And they use something called a seeker swarm, which when the uh, bug stings you, you basically get um, paralyzed. And we need to find something to prevent ourselves from being paralyzed like that. Oops. So we're going to set up our weapons in a specific way here. Um, Basically, this game doesn't really have like hotkeys for weapons. They have a next weapon and uh, previous weapon and last weapon. So, because we don't really want to go to the attack menu every single time, we want to like uh, set those up in a specific way. So, really, we're only going to be using our assault rifle, which is the best damage dealing one. We're playing on New Game Plus, so we have one called the Matlock rifle. We're going to be using our heavy weapon, which is called the cane, which is basically a tactical nuke from Modern Warfare 2. And then we have a pistol, which we actually only use really for um, what we're going to do right here, which is going to be uh, melee abuse. So as you can see, like I said earlier, um, whenever I want to jump off something, I'm going to melee. Um, that is because it kind of lets us get to the collision and the melee animations for the pistol sends you farther. We're gonna switch back over here. So yeah, mail, uh, weapon like usage is very, very important in this game and like using them in the right spot. But yeah, right now we're um, supposed to be heading over to Morden's clinic to talk to him. However, because of that little skip that we did at the very beginning, um, we're basically gonna skip that because all he was gonna do is he was gonna send us over um, to go over here to put a cure for a virus inside the fans that will help the people in this district. Um, so we're gonna go do that for him and then once we do that, he's like, all right, thanks for doing that. Now I'm gonna go join your team. Um, that's basically gonna be these opening areas. We're just gonna be recruiting all of the like people for our mission. Um, it's worth noting that when it comes to uh, the ability that I'm using to charge, it's kind of a finicky trick. Sometimes it will like just not work as intended. It has to do with um, like how the game sees some characters as being in bounds or out of bounds, because it doesn't want you teleporting to an enemy that's out of bounds. So it has to like, a check that it does, and sometimes it doesn't work very well. Um, we're also going to be hoping that Jacob dies here. Um, if he is dead, what ends up happening is um, we actually get to skip some dialogue, so we'll see if we get lucky, and it looks like we did. So we won't be hearing Jacob uh, talk after we initialize the F last hand blade light here. Or the array right there, and there we go. 
So now we have Morden. Morden is uh, one of the best companions uh, for the speedrun because he has some really good abilities and along with that um, we get him almost immediately. So we've been rocking Miranda and Jacob for the first couple of missions. Now we're going to be rocking uh, Miranda and Morden. Um, Miranda is both like the best companion for the speedrun and the best companion casually. Um, at least in terms of combat. You know, whether or not you like her is is up to your own choices but we're gonna be heading off um, here and basically the reason that she's so good is she has some really good powers but she also has a passive that just gives both you and your other companion um, a slight increase in damage that no other character has so she's pretty good um, but now we're going to be recruiting our next companion. This is uh, Archangel, and we're also going to be getting the veteran. So this category is any percent new game plus with a DLC. Kind of a mouthful, but um, the new game plus just has to do with what weapons we have it has, and a little bit with our armor. But also with the DLC means that we get access to Zaid. So before you can initiate the final, um, the final mission, you need to recruit a super, a certain number of companions, and the DLC characters count towards this. Um, most companions in the base game have what's called a recruitment mission, where you need to do a mission in order to get them on your team, and then they have a loyalty mission, which is where you earn their trust. Um, the DLC characters don't actually have that recruitment requirement, so you can just walk up to them, talk to them, and pick them up immediately. So they're much, much faster um, than if you had to like go get Tally, and I think Thane is the other one that you would grab. Don't. Also, this is where like this, some of the dialogue matters. You have to like select the right one over there. Um, right now, we're going to be walking over as we talk to this guy and do a bunch of stuff in order to get access to um, Archangel. Because basically what's happening is all of the mercenary groups in the game are getting really sick of Archangel being a good guy and they want to change that. So they're all like teaming up to kill him and they're hiring mercenaries to be kind of cannon fodder. So we're signing up through that way, but we actually got time for a donation or any readings if we would like to do that. Well, absolutely. I'll tell folks um, just again that uh, LEAD lead leading efforts against drugs is a substance use of prevention organization that believes young people are capable of making good decisions. The core reason lead exists is to significantly reduce drinking, drug use and other risky behavior by youth while working simultaneously to eliminate the root causes of these issues in the future. To learn more, please go to linking efforts Type uh, exclamation point donate if you'd like to get the link to the Tiltify, and if you can, uh, donate and put your donation towards, don't just click donate, uh, you can click next and see our target, our bid war for Metroid Dread versus Metroid Prime 2 Echoes randomizer for the finale. Thank you. Awesome. So right now we're doing a couple more um, elevators. You just saw that I did what's called like a the Gera zip. Basically, if you take that angle for the first elevator in a specific way, you can kind of just like fling yourself forward and get over the uh, the boundary, which is really cool. There's a lot of like little stuff in this game like that. Um, so this is the most combat heavy part of the run um, and we are playing on casual however this was before um, there were a lot of like changes in difficulties so it's still a pretty difficult one because basically uh, this is going to be all combat for the entire time and enemies are still pretty dangerous. Never knew about this skill and I love that you can just any percent skip to their face and two frame them. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> Indeed. And uh, whenever I'm doing charge, I don't think I mentioned this, but um, I'm actually pausing the game and I'm pausing it because it skips the animation entirely. So if you thought it looked off, um, that's the reason why. Let's give these bastards everything. Yeah, gonna be trying to do this like as best as I can. Um, typically, it's not too important in a marathon setting but we want to do this right. So I'm going to send my companions over there. We want the companions to not kill that many people. We don't want Garrus to kill that many people because we want to hear them uh, align where he's like, they're coming into the base, like that. So the game has kind of a, um, a safety feature where if you're getting your butt kicked, it'll kind of help you out by basically making it so if there are four companions in here, it won't spawn any additional enemies and it'll just um, go on to the next wave. We actually learned about that from a QA dev. 
So it's pretty cool. I'm gonna try and do this fight as best as we can. Uh, this fight can be a little bit scary. Like I said, even though we're playing on New Game Plus and on the easiest difficulty, it doesn't really mean too much because this game is still very hard. Um, and you can still die very easily. This is a cover-based shooter and we're basically not doing that at all. Okay, two. Oh, did that out of order, but that's all right. So right now, um, if you guys didn't know, Archangel is actually Garrus from the original game. Um, I will I will take this time to mention now because I'm sure there are a lot of Mass Effect fans in the uh, the chat right now. Um, you're not gonna like the ending that we get. Um, this is gonna be any percent ending, and if you don't know, this game has a bunch of systems in place to decide what ending you get. It has to do with um, what companions you have recruited, whose loyalty missions you've done, um, what choices you make during the final mission, what choices you make before the final mission. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, we are getting the worst ending, so... Fair warning, you're gonna see a lot of beloved characters die. Um, usually they're off screen, however, Garrus is, uh, is is a little bit more on screen. So I just wanna give a fair warning. Um, there is a category where you have everybody live. Um, unfortunately, that is not this one. So just mentally prepare yourselves. But right now we have to close all these shutters. Essentially, um, they're trying to like invade Garrus' uh, base in a bunch of different ways. And we're trying to uh, stop that. I do another little charge over here. And there we go. That should be the next part. Um, thankfully, we don't have to worry about too, ammo too much. Um, something that you're going to notice is like how I already have incendiary on my gun, even though I didn't equip it earlier in the mission. Um, we have, there's a bug called the autosave bug. And basically what it does is um, whenever like you're loading into a new area, if you have autosaves turned off, you actually don't have to um, like reset up everything because it bases it off of like wherever your last save was and we have a quick save where we have all of our ammo and all these weapons already set up um, this is a bug that's actually still in the legendary edition but basically it means that we keep our loadouts um, it also means that we have to be careful we have a cane with full ammo but the cane is a really good weapon and it's really hard to actually get uh, more ammo for later on so I can't actually quick save after I use it. If I do, then it kind of ruins the run because I just won't have enough ammo to actually finish the uh, finish the game. So I have to be a little bit careful about it. But we really only use it one single time per mission, and is usually near the end on the like the boss enemy. So it's just something to uh, keep in mind though, which is why I'm not gonna really be picking up ammo or anything. This isn't like a, uh, a new game plus feature or anything like that. Right now we're just waiting for these enemies to file through. There we go. Now we're going to do a little boss fight where we have to fight and take down that gunship, but um, we're just going to do the cane shot. So whenever you have shield, you cannot die from the cane. So you can just shoot it like right next to yourself and you are perfectly fine. There's Garrus. He's okay. He's just taking a nap. But there we go. Now we're going to be heading over to pick up Jack. Jack is one of my favorite companions personally from the game. Um, she is a super, super powerful biotic prisoner. That's going to be helping us out later on. Um, really the same for every single category is exactly the same. The game kind of, um, I guess, like gatekeeps you until you get to... Um, oops. The game kind of gatekeeps you until you get to uh, Horizon. And that's like when it really, really opens up. But for now, we kind of have like the pseudo tutorial still going on. So 
So this level can be a little wonky. There's a lot of like nuances to it. It's actually one of the only levels I think now that doesn't have a um, an out of bounds of some kind. The main aspect of this is to get what's called a fast warden fight. The warden is the like final boss of the area, and he's the kind of a normal dude, normal enemy to fight. Um, but the thing is, he has a shield, and that shield will go up a few seconds after he is um, like revealed and we want to try and kill him before that shield goes up it's pretty difficult but we'll see if we can get it um but it, it'll save you a bunch of time because otherwise you have to like do a bunch of stuff oh we got the glitch good thing i made a save for that sometimes when you go through there it doesn't actually give you your weapons like it's supposed to like that so very glad that we made the uh the safety save Ah. Yeah, so like I said, sometimes the enemies will glitch out and you won't actually be able to charge them. It's very, very annoying when you're going for like a, um, an actual run. We're going to continue on down here. Basically, we're going to be running uh, to the very end. Also, don't mind that guy. He's fine. We're gonna pull out the uh, weapon right here. As you can see, pulling out the cane is kind of a nuisance. So we don't really like to do it very often because it kind of slows you down um, while you try and pull it out. We're gonna do a little charge right here. You have to kill every single enemy in this area. So we're gonna do exactly that. And for whatever reason, you can just shoot the cane at your feet and you're totally fine. We'll just say it's the, the cybernetics that uh that brought Shepard back that allows her to do that. So you're gonna see me like sometimes attack enemies or shoot them before I use charge. Um, something that can kind of happen is that whenever you're charging at an enemy, you'll just get stuck on them and ragdoll and fling yourself somewhere, which is really not good. So we wanna try and avoid that. And, ah, we didn't get it. That's unfortunate. Um, he's going to be really close, though. It's kind of hard to do consistently. Even, like, the top runners um, have some issues with it. Ah, he was, like, two shot. That's fine. But that was still a really good um, prison. So now, now we got Jack, and we're going to be heading over to get our uh, next companion. And this is going to be the last one that we get um, before we continue on with the uh, the main mission with Jizz uh, Horizon. So we're going to be getting everybody's second favorite Krogan companion, Grunt. Um, Grunt is on a uh, like a war-torn planet, and we're going to be trying to actually recruit um, their creator slash father because Grunt is actually like a clone, um, and it's supposed to be like the perfect Krogan, so to speak. Um, but we were actually trying to get his um, his like the general that created him. Yeah, this is probably the buggiest level, in my opinion. Um, charge doesn't really like to work really well here. There's a lot of like weird collision stuff that goes on, so it can be kind of scary, but hopefully everything works out pretty well. Um, this is very much a level where we are just literally running to the end. Um, we're going to do some kind of dangerous out-of-bounds here. I want to be careful with where I'm landing, because if you mess up, you uh, die. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. There we go. Um, right now, we're just kind of running towards the end with a little bit of combat in between. So if we have any donations or anything that we want else to discuss, that's the best time to do so. Absolutely. I'll just let folks know. Uh, you can type exclamation point donate to get some more donations coming in. We still have our bid all throughout the rest of our projects of oh, uh, sonic 06 runs again the big finale is coming up don't want to don't want to undermine or like understate the randomizer for metroid dread i've never seen dread didn't even uh like randomized i didn't even know it had a randomizer you know yeah i didn't I, either yeah with that huge lead i as much as i want to keep it you can shake things up by donating 
and voting Metroid Prime. It might hurt my heart, but you know, for the for the good of uh, leading efforts against drugs and the charity as a whole, you can do that. Absolutely, get your donations in. Thank you very much. All right, so we're gonna be very careful in this area. I want to do this in like a very specific way. Um, the movement that you do here actually does matter um, in terms of getting charged properly, but we didn't get it. So that's gonna be a little. Oh, that's not great. I might die here. I'm gonna be playing this a little carefully. You're supposed to be able to charge that guy. Um, it didn't work because the game. Uh, this this is my favorite level. It just is functions so well and has absolutely zero bugs in it whatsoever. Um, one of my favorite bugs is where your companions are dead, so you can't use their abilities. But the game doesn't tell you that. It says that they're alive. But thankfully, we didn't get that one. That one's a, a very frustrating one. Um, but you're going to see me, like, actually use my abilities on enemies. That's because if I don't use, uh, like, warp on that guy, like, if I don't use warp specifically on that dude, it will not let me charge to him. So, thankfully, we got through it without any issues. But this is a very scary area because you can die really easily. Um, you can't quick save or anything like that. Um, and overall, it just a, it can be a very painful level. Okay, we'll see if we got those spawns here. We didn't. That's good. All right, we should be okay. Yeah, you can't like save there at all. So you have to go back to the beginning if you die. It's very easy to die. It's very buggy. Definitely like a lot of stuff can go wrong, but we got through the uh, the hardest part. Now we're heading over to the boss fight. So essentially, Okir was working for a mercenary group and they were like hiring him to make Krogan clones to like create soldiers for them um, and all that stuff. But basically now they're like cutting out the life support to all the um like areas and all the clones and every single one is going to die but okir sacrifices himself to save grunt so pass, uh, press f for okir over there but now we have grunt and we're gonna be heading over to horizon horizon is um i guess like one of the main missions there aren't too many but essentially it's one of the ones where once you progress further enough in your progress towards defeating the collectors the mission opens up from uh the elusive man so we're going to do a little lap around this area to head back to the meeting room. And now we're going to be heading off to Horizon. Horizon is actually probably one of the glitchiest um, missions in the entire game. Normally you're supposed to go through this entire colony of people, fight the collectors, do all this and that. And we're just going to be skipping a lot of it up until the end fight. This is the most warning we've ever had, Shepard. Good luck. Joker set a course for Horizon. Um, you're also going to notice something if you watch the game a lot or if you played it casually. Um, we're actually using a speedrun mod. So the speedrun mod it doesn't really change too much of it, of the like run itself. Um, it is allowed on the boards. Basically, what it does is it does things like increases your FOV. So you know, it, it's dealt with motion sickness as well as it also um, gets rid of all the pre rendered cutscenes because the timers pauses on the pre rendered cutscenes which we don't really want to have happen. Um, and along with that, you know, they're just very long and don't really offer anything to the run. So we, we cut them out and it does have some funny effects later on. But yeah, if you notice any like weird quirks about that or like the FOV, then it's probably from the speed run mod. Um, I'm also going to mention now that this is actually not the legendary edition of the game. So this isn't the re-release. This is the original OG uh, 2010 copy. So keep that in mind if you are interested in speed running the game um, and you want something that's maybe less glitchy, I would recommend looking into the Legendary Edition. But um, if you want like this exact run, you will need the OG copy. So here we go. We're going to do another elevator. Awesome. This is the scariest part about this trick. We need to load in collision and not deload it. So hopefully it works out. Go safety save. Yep, 
there we go all right awesome we got that first try that's a little scary i took that like safer than i really needed to um if you go too far right there um the area will deload and you'll fall but if you go too far left you won't be able to cross it because there'll be an invisible wall so you kind of have to really thread the needle but there we go we have just basically skipped the entirety of horizon now we get the rng puzzle ah damn um yeah these puzzles are completely random um and as you can see they can take forever if they want to but that wasn't too bad so now we have the horizon fight uh we're gonna be basically doing this in a very specific way this is the first area though that we really fight a lot of collectors and the uh the harbingers um, so when it comes to fighting collectors and harbinger is involved, you want to fight them in a very specific way um, Because harbinger right there will basically um, Take over certain enemies and we want them to take over enemies that we're not already shooting at Because if he takes over like an enemy with one HP, it'll just completely refill them over again uh, it doesn't really happen here too much because he can only like um, come one at a time like he can only spawn once uh, per fight in later missions though he can spawn multiple per fight so you have to like kill him in a specific order and you basically want harbinger to be the last one that you kill okay that guy and nice very good fight I'm gonna be a little quiet here. I basically need to shoot the cane at a very specific uh, moment. So I'm gonna be listening for dialogue. Got to be more. That should be good. And hopefully. No All right, we got it. Oof. I thought we didn't. Ah, uh, no, we didn't. Okay, that's fine. Uh, looks like I shot that a little too early. So we just have to actually just do this fight properly. Uh, that should be fine. For that yeah normally you can skip this entire fight but we got a little bit of bad luck which is okay uh, in the meantime while I'm doing this fight really quick I think we have some time for a little bit of donations or any other plugs or questions that you have I might have a question. The uh, with the mod is this also like with IGT on the leaderboard? Uh, with this the, is uh, with RCA without loads. So oh, okay. if you are if you don't really want to run the uh, mod, there's no reason not to. But uh, it will actually be relatively the same time. But like we use the speedrun mod because it just is very easy to use. It literally just like makes the run better. But um, yeah, that's a very common thing. But we do use RTA without loads because there isn't really an IGT timer. All right, so now we're talking to Jacob. Uh, we're doing this to get his uh, access to his loyalty mission, which what that will do is that will um, open up a galaxy uh, that we can actually get to that we need to for a certain mission later on. We're also going to get the heavy ship armor upgrade. So if you play this game before, um, you know that you need to... Um, two very specific things um, in order to prepare because this entire game is building up to a suicide mission essentially um, and the suicide mission is basically like something that you need to get ready for so you want to get ship upgrades you want to make sure all your companions are loyal loyal you want to make sure that you know about them because you know you want to make sure that you're assigning them for the right jobs um we're not doing that so we're just getting his loyalty mission purely out of the fact that you know um it will give us access to a mission that is very quick so now that the game is opening up the way that it works is it checks to the game checks to make sure you have a certain amount of companions and then it checks to make sure that you have done a certain amount of missions before it will give you access to the next main mission so right now we're going to be doing what are called n7 missions these are not missions to get companions or anything like that these are missions to um basically i just want to make sure this is the right planet uh, it is not. Whoops. We're actually going to be heading over to... Right, Amon. Okay. 
Um, basically, sorry about that. Uh, they're like missions that are tiny little ones that are kind of one-offs that you unlock later on. Um, and these are gonna be the first couple of ones. But yeah, this is more just to fill the, uh, the mission check counter, um, for the next one. Right now we need to find this. There we go. You're going to be seeing me actually take Garrus with us for a couple of reasons. There really isn't any specific reason other than we don't have really much combat on this mission. And whenever we don't have any combat, it's just faster to choose uh, Garrus over Morden. So at least we get a couple missions with Garrus. Um, because for whatever reason, even when he's not recruited, he will be the default option every single time. Because the game devs just love Garrus. It's, it's very obvious about that. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of where any percent slows down. Um, like I said earlier, this is the bad ending where a lot of people die at the end. Um, if you want one where your favorite companion doesn't die, um, there are two categories that you might like a little bit more. Um, one of them is called No One Left Behind, which essentially is very similar to any percent, but you make sure that everybody survives a suicide mission. So you do a couple of different missions. You uh, recruit Tally, which is really nice and all that stuff. Oh, am I going to get bad RNG? I didn't. But that one is basically everyone lives, and it's a slightly different run with some cooler levels. Um, and then there's all loyalty missions where you actually recruit every single cook companion and do their loyalty mission, which is also really fun. So if you're a Mass Effect fan, there's a lot of different categories where, you know, you don't have to, like, sacrifice your soul to uh, kill Garrus. <laughs> We go we're heading to the Jirahi station again right now we're kind of just filling out the uh, mission order um, this is a kind of a boring mission as a speed run basically what happens is um, it's kind of like a system shock to reference pretty much this entire mission um, where a rogue VI which is a virtual intelligence has taken over and uh, is causing some issues um, unfortunately the prompts are really bad in this area um, so that's going to be a common thing that you'll see is me struggling to actually open doors. But yeah, as you can see, this is where the auto save bug really shows is like I ended the horizon fight with, you know, zero bullets in my gun. And now I have completely full, uh, completely full ammo. So that's like the reason that we do it. But yeah, now's another good time for uh, the host to plug donations, the, uh, the the charity, or anything else they would desire. Absolutely. Letting folks know this is Speed Stuff for Charity 9. Speed Stuff for Charity is a speedrun marathon team dedicated to annually raising money for charities. We've raised over 15,000. We're almost the 15,000, according to Ness underscore. In eight years of doing marathons, plan to continue for as long as there's interest. Previously benefited St. Jude's, Doctors Without Borders, Equality Texas, and the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Benefiting LEAD this event, LEAD is the substance abuse prevention organization that believes young people are capable of making good decisions. And yeah, type in exclamation point donate if you'd like to contribute, if you're able to. If not, that's perfectly fine. We still appreciate you being here. Uh, you are raising awareness by being a viewer of this stream, and we do appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Awesome, good timing. We're just coming to the end of the area uh, where we hit that, and now we can just turn off the uh, VI mainframe. Okay, now we're heading over to Joab. So we're gonna be returning back over here. Um, if you know, there's like a fuel gauge on the uh, the Normandy when you're traveling between these different systems. That does play a factor into it, but not too much. We're gonna come all the way over here. Um, so this is the galaxy that we learned about um, when we're helping Jacob, but we're not gonna do that because Jacob's okay and all, but we don't really wanna do his mission. There we go. So this is actually one of my favorite N7 missions because it has a uh, a very cool uh, elevator that we're going to be seeing right here. Um, 
as you can see elevators are really broken some of them are only slightly like good or slight increases but this one is just like we get sent all the way up here so it's always fun but yeah that's like the one issue about this category is uh this middle part can get a little boring compared to the rest of it um, which is why a lot of the runners prefer no one left behind because you're essentially doing the same amount of missions um but the missions that you do are a little bit better even if they're longer Um, an important thing as well is uh, when you're doing this run is you have to usually have notes or remember like where you're traveling to because it can get kind of confusing because you know this is like technically an open world so it'll let you really go um, wherever you desire but you know you want to make sure that you're doing everything correctly and you're doing it in the right order but it can get very confusing there it is cool Especially like these plant scans, because they're in the same spot every time, but they're kind of hard to get to. Um, so this is a solo mission. Um, normally, you're not really given these too often, but basically Shepherds can be on their own for now. Um, you're supposed to be navigating this like crash ship, and you're supposed to be very careful not to knock anything over and do a bunch of puzzle solving and all that stuff. But of course, we're just going to, you know, not do any of that because it's a speed run that's slow. The elevator, perfect. And that's going to take us all the way to the very end. Awesome. All right. We should only have one more mission um, before we go get to have a discussion with some collectors. All right, so this one, I think you're supposed to be playing like a uh, a game where like you protect a bunch of cargo, but of course that's a little too long for us. So we're just gonna take our cane, aim it over here, and there we go. We beat the level. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, some of these missions are uh, very short. There we go. Now the kind of boring part's almost done. We're going to be heading over to the main missions. So what's going on right now is the elusive man has gotten a sing signal from a... Whoops. Hold on. What did I forget? Sorry, one second. That should have been Deratar, so I'm wondering why that didn't work. That should have been the collector ship, so I'm not really sure why that's not really working right now. This game can be a little weird, so I'm trying to figure out if I got a... Uh, a soft log or if I missed something. We did the Ammon. Yeah, that's we did Neath. Um, I'm not too sure what's going on right now. Um, might need to take a little pause right here because I need to figure out why I, uh, it's not letting me go talk to uh the elusive man which it should be doing right now what's this here logging you out shepherd yeah i'm having a bit of, t of tech issues right now so um can we pause right here and i'll try and get a save loaded up actually let me see if i have that one right here um because, yeah, that's not supposed to be what's happening. So, should have a save right here, though. Should make everything fine. And uh, we'll just load this up. That way we don't have to worry about any issues like that. 
Um, everything should be good right now, but okay. We're just gonna load that and not worry about it. But right now we should have got a cutscene um, where we talk to the elusive man. He gets a signal from a bunch of, uh, uh, of Cro not Krogan's, um, Garrus's people. Um, and the ship is supposed to be abandoned. Of course it's not, but we're gonna get some very good data for the elusive man. But yeah, this is going to be just basically like the first half is going to be a run through where we're just kind of uh, going to be run through an empty ship. Nothing too um, big or important is going to be happening. So now would be a good time for some donations. Sure thing. Just letting folks know to get those donations in for our bid war for Metroid Dread versus Metroid Prime 2, the randomizer finale run by Bash Prime. Uh, still got a 105. Metroid Dread to Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, which was in the lead for several hours. Uh, that's just been flipped uh, with the uh, 105 to 25 lead there by Metroid Dread. So very excited. Hopefully we keep that lead, but uh, you can always shake things up. Uh, been loving the atmosphere in Mass Effect 2, that same kind of sci-fi, almost a little bit spooky sometimes, with this, especially with this abandoned ship. Here. Yeah, this level's a, a great example of that. All right, we're almost coming to the end of this super long walk, and this is where it's going to get interesting. So normally we had a very scary jump that we had to do where it was very easy for us to almost die. Um, we're basically going to be avoiding that now. We found out a, that if you are in your tack menu, it, it messes up your um, collision, and because of that... We can skip through the death plane and not have to worry about dying. So it goes from like a like 80% consistent skip to a 100% consistent skip, which is really good. Come over here, drop down. I'm gonna shoot that at the perfect time to kill the uh, boss like right over here. And there we go. That's actually like one of my favorite little uh, skips in the game. There's a lot of like skips that are like just really fun to do when you get them consistent, even though they're extremely hard. Because navigation, um, getting the timing on falling with the cane shot, like there's a lot that can um, definitely go wrong there. over here this is a introduction to an enemy that will get much more annoying later on called cyan um it's that big guy right there they can stun you they take a lot to actually kill they're just overall very very annoying over here yeah once we get to uh reaper iff then they're going to be a bit of a danger but there we go. I have also determined now we're going to be heading over to uh, Reaper IFF. So we need to get a IFF, which is a... I can't remember the... Um, or I think it's identifying friend or foe. Basically, we need to jump through the Omega-4 relay, which is where the collectors are and they're taking people. And that's how we're going to have to save them. And basically, this will uh, make it so the automatic defenses don't um, kill us when we try to make the jump. So I will say, though, if you are doing this game casually, do not do this mission until you are like done, until you have done everything you wanted, because when you do this mission, it is going to um, put you on a timer um, where people will die if you don't go to the end of the game fast enough. So when you're here, like you should have everything else that you have wanted to do completely done. Yeah, also, this is a this is going to be a really broken cutscene. This is a side effect of the speedrun mod when we're turning off the pre-rendered cutscenes because the game still continues going in the background um, while it's playing the pre-rendered cutscenes, and it, it does some very weird stuff. I'll just let this play out. Don't worry about Joker. He is totally fine, totally okay. 
Don't worry about his eyes. They're gonna be like perfectly functional, normal eyes. Yeah, hey, he's doing his best. Mm-hmm. What just happened? <laughs> the Reaper's Mass Effect fields are still. This is where it gets really bad. Yeah, that that's normal. That's what eyes should be doing. Woo yeah. So. I just, uh, <laughs> oh god. That killed me. Okay, just checking that. Get some dialogue from Joker. So this is actually one of the biggest skips that we've found um recently. Um I'm gonna do a little safety save right here. So this is like one of the bigger ones. Basically, we're going to be doing a elevator. We're going to be falling into the out of bounds and we're going to be just barely avoiding a death trigger, which is going to drop us onto the next part of the game. And it skips having to do a puzzle and having to wait for a cutscene. So this is probably the most dangerous trick in the run. Hopefully I get it first try. Let's see. We got first try, nice. So if you miss that, you die. Like you full on die. You have to go back to wherever your last save was. Um, this is still one of the scariest areas in the run. Um, it's very easy to die here. You have a lot of enemies that are jerks and we're gonna have to do a RNG puzzle. So lots of fun stuff going on. Um, your companions can also die like that, which is really bad. Um, we don't want them to die because then we can't use their abilities. Hopefully Miranda stays alive. We're gonna kill these guys. Gonna revive him. Alright, now we're gonna do this puzzle as quickly as we can. Okay, that was a really quick puzzle. There we go. Take that. Swap to this. All right, we're good. Whew. That is always a really scary part because just so much can go wrong there. But um, overall, that was actually pretty decent. All right, awesome. And let's make sure I don't accidentally kill uh, Legion. There we go. He's good. Perfect. So now we have a couple more um, missions that we have to do um, to trigger the the very end part. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was the like most dangerous, like scary stretch of the entire game. So now we get a little break with some uh, calm, relaxing N7 missions. We're going to feel up. This should be the last time that we need to feel up for the rest of the run. Now we're heading on over to uh, Sin Mara, I believe is what the planet's called. Um, this is another little puzzle one that we're supposed to be doing. Uh, there it is. It can always be kind of hard to find like where the scan spots are. <laughs> So we're just going to come over here and we got a little puzzle that we have to do. Um, I think this was supposed to be like a very important factor into Mass Effect 3 originally, but they kind of um, were rushed. So some stuff got changed. So we're going to activate that cooling unit. Gonna activate that shield generator. There we go. And now we got another puzzle. These puzzles are really annoying because they're completely random. Um, there are kind of set patterns that you can figure out. But um, it's still like very hard to do like quickly. All right, now we're going to be heading over to um, Lorik, which should be the last um, N7 mission that we do. 
we're gonna head back all the way to the original um, nebula that we were in the Omega nebula and we're gonna head over to Fadar um, this is actually also one of my favorite n7 missions it's uh, a very cool one that you just skip completely there it is. Over here, do another elevator right there. Perfect. Do another elevator there. Um, with these elevators, I know it looks like I'm just like walking into the wall and just like getting it, but um, it has to do with like your angle, your positioning, and all that stuff. And every single one is like completely different from the other. So you have to like learn like what angles do or don't work. All right, so now we're heading to the Omega Relay, um, and this is going to trigger that IFF countdown that I mentioned earlier. Um, basically, that countdown is for your ship actually getting attacked. Um, so basically what happens is Shepard's like, hey, I have to go check this thing out. And of course, um, and unlike every other mission where you only bring two companions with you, you have to bring every single companion with you. So. Shepard and all of the companions that you recruited are not on the uh, ship. They are in this um, in this transport unit. Um, and of course, while you're doing this, uh, the ship gets attacked by collectors because it turns out the Reaper IFF that you picked up actually has a uh, a GPS in it, and um, that's not really good for our character. So this is the only time in the entire Mass Effect trilogy. The entire one, all the DLCs, everything, that you play as somebody that is not Shepard. You play actually as Joker here. Joker's the pilot for the Normandy, and um, he has a, uh, a, a disease that basically makes his bones very weak and fragile, which is why he doesn't really see combat much. So, basically, we're going to be um, playing as him and kind of just going through this section as quickly as we can. Nothing too special about it, but... Um, yeah, really, you can't do too much in this area. Is that condition brought on by the speedrun mod, or...? No, unfortunately not. In fact, it should have been the opposite. We should have cured it and made him run, like, you know, faster, but... What can you do? <laughs> but yeah, so basically, uh, this is like a lore thing. This is why he's a pilot, is because he can't really do much else in terms of combat. So yeah, now we're gonna be trying to get through here. Um, he was talking to Edie, who is the ship's AI, and basically she wants to be unshackled, and everybody knows that unshackling AI in sci-fi never has any consequences. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go unshackle her, and she's gonna go help save the ship. Yeah, this is a nice little calm before the storm, so to speak, because after this, um, we go into the suicide mission, and the suicide mission is a, uh, is a pretty difficult one. These are also the only pre-rendered cutscenes in the entire game that we cannot get rid of. If you if we delete these cutscenes from the game, um, the game just doesn't function. Like it'll it'll soft lock you here. We're not really too sure why, but it's not too big of a deal. And um, you know, it still is even towards everybody because the timer still stops on them. Also, a little body fling right there, and then um, Kelly is just hanging out with him. I think that's a consequence of the speedrun mod, but I can't quite remember. Another consequence is we're going to see Legion here T-posing like a god. Look at him. Look at that boy. <laughs> yeah. That's why we keep him alive. That's the only reason that we do not kill Legion is purely because it's funny to see him standing up over there. Ah. Um, also, a little thing is you're supposed to be following those red lights, which will run into enemies, and you'll have to, like, wait for them to get out of the area. Um, however, if you just go the other way, you don't have to worry about the enemies at all. So I don't know if they, like, let that in on purpose or not, but it's just kind of funny that you can go the unintentional way, and you're good to go. So what ends up happening is the entirety of the Normandy crew... Outside of Joker, um, gets kidnapped by the Collectors for their nefarious deeds. And, um, Joker's the only one that lives. Um, basically the way that ED saves him is she literally vents the entire ship outside of our, uh, our crew. 
And uh, yeah, that's just gonna leave Joker on board. So this is where the timer comes into play. It's basically, if you're playing this game and you get this area, I think you have one mission that you can do before people on your crew start dying. I think if it's two, if you do two missions, then like half your crew dies. And if you do three or more, then everybody, but I think Dr. Chakwa um, gets killed. So you gotta be pretty careful. I know. That's exactly. Yeah. So now that our crew has been kidnapped, we're gonna play the good guy Shepherd, who's gonna definitely save the entire crew and not leave them to die. That's definitely not gonna happen. Shepherd, the guest is functional but Yeah. So we're gonna come over here, and this is the kind of point of no return. And now we are good to go. So this is going to be leading into the final mission of the game, the suicide mission. Let's make it happen. Um, we're not ready for this. So the entire game is literally about you preparing for this mission. And we're basically have not done that in the slightest. The only thing that we got is we got the ship upgrade. Um, the reason we got the ship upgrade is because if you don't get it, Jack dies. Um, and Miranda is a really good companion, so you could have her as the biotic, but it's better if you do it with Jack because Miranda's powers are really good for that section and you don't get access to them if you choose her for that specialist, specialist role. So along with that, the cutscene where Jack dies is actually really, really long. So if we talk to Jacob and get the ship upgrade, it takes like five seconds and it saves about 10 seconds total. So. Oh, on this save, it doesn't actually have that, so Jack is going to be dead, so that's fine. <laughs> Never mind, I, I totally forgot that we had the, the tech issue, and that we didn't get it on this save. So that's totally fine. So you guys get to see what it looks like when she does die. I'm sorry, I just totally baited everybody. I was like, yeah, she's going to be fine, guys, don't worry. But yeah, now you get to see the consequences. So if you play this game, you probably like never saw this, because it's very uncommon for people to actually get to this position. So this is the oculus basically gotta you know hit it with as much as we can there we go we're sitting ducks out here i have to try to lose them in the debris field hey morden so yeah this area is where they do the uh the checks for the ship upgrades so if you didn't get ship upgrades um People are going to die and it actually has a super, super complicated way to decide who dies where outside of the very first one. Like this one, it could be Kasumi, it could be Tally, it could be Garrus, it could be um, Legion, it could be, I think, another character, I think Thane and someone else. And depending on like what loyalties you have will change the priority order depending on, you know, that stuff. Um, so we really just recruited Kasumi just to die there because it's faster than recruiting Tally. So, if you are a Tally fan, like myself, te technically, technically, she doesn't die. It's a very big technically, but it's, it's still something. There we go, that is the Oculus defeated. And now we're heading into the area where um, we're gonna get the last um, ship check and then we're going to be assigning roles. So the main part of the suicide mission is you're supposed to be assigning um, like fire team leaders and specialists for specific roles. And if you don't choose the right people, then very bad things happen. Also, that's Garrus is fine. Don't worry about it. He is he is perfectly OK. Yeah, we should be getting to So basically, the game wants you to choose the uh, the correct people for the correct roles, and um, and we're not we're not really we're not really gonna do that. We're basically gonna be trying to keep Miranda and Morden alive, and that's all that we care about. Joker, you and Edie get the ship back online. Miranda, 
Gather everyone else in the briefing room. We need a plan. Yeah, we should be almost done through these cutscenes. I remember seeing one endgame mission. That was my only context of Mass Effect 2 of picking between two different characters. One of them is like naturally better at the adept abilities, uh, like a force field or something. And then in like one of them is like kind of good and really wants to do it. But I don't know. Yeah, that, that's you uh, one you'll see later on. Um, OK, so we are heading into the suicide mission. I'm actually going to turn on auto saves. Um, the reason for that is that it will help us with a thing later on in the very last boss fight. But along with that, the game automatically gives you your ammo back um, anyway. So because of that, uh, we just leave it on because it'll help us with a thing later on. And along with that, um, the game already does what the bug was doing for us. So it's really nice, but basically this is going to be running through. Um, the game wants you to help Jacob with by turning off like those heat exchangers in the vents. Um, however, if you just run to the very end and do the last one, um, then you don't actually need to do it. Um, that was actually another thing that one of the devs uh, told us about, that we could just like go to the very last one and do that instead of having to do every single one. So it's very cool. And over here. And cool, that actually went pretty well. Sometimes, um, you know, bad things can happen in that area, but we actually got pretty lucky, so that was really fast. So this is where Jacob dies and some other stuff happens. Um, we're gonna choose Miranda here, we're gonna choose Zaid. We're gonna take Morden and Grunt. So we, the reason that um, we normally would have Miranda and Grun here, um, the reason that we choose Grun is because if you don't have a biotic specialist that can do this area properly, uh, which Miranda cannot do, despite everyone, you know, her saying like, oh yeah, I got this, it's easy for a biotic, I'm the best person ever, um, she cannot do this part even if she is loyal. Um, oh, whoops, yeah, gotta talk to her. So the way that it does it is you have like the line of companions on the screen and it basically goes left to right. So the one on the left will always survive and the one on the right will not. So we're gonna get a damage harbinger there. We don't want to kill him because otherwise he'll jump to another enemy. And that's like gonna be very common in this area and the next area is like doing just the basic to like damage him. But we want to kill all these guys first. I also want to be careful here if you mash too quickly to have them like move out they'll actually just teleport to the very end game will soft lock and you'll die so we want to avoid that yeah unfortunately this is kind of just a uh, an auto scroller this was like right around the time that Gears of War um, was popular and Gears of War has a lot of these so Devs went a little crazy there for the, the cover shooters with the auto scrollers. Is there a difference in these uh, these force field like diameters between the two different characters? Nope. The only thing nope. that matters is it's literally just to check to see if you lose a companion at the end or not. Oh, okay. That would have been a cool feature though if like different companions had like different sizes or anything like that but no it's basically just a does somebody get carried off by a seeker swarm or not <laughs> um this mission has like just a lot of those checks and a lot of like different systems mechanics to um decide who lives and dies it's it's very common for you to um like at least have one or two companions live like the way that we're doing it, we're pretty much like you'd have to be doing this intentionally in a casual playthrough for everybody to die. Um, it's it's actually very, very difficult and is literally kind of a joke ending that the devs put in because it's like if you got here, 
you've like been completely ignoring all the like loyalty missions you're making the intentionally wrong choices you're not recruiting all of your companions like you're you're really messing up a lot wow yeah i had it in my head that like maybe miranda was overcompensating and that would be like kind of playing into that overconfidence while the other character maybe had a smaller force field from my memory and it was just an emphasis on control and self-discipline and all that other stuff but i, mean, I made it definitely up. right that she's overcompensating because she says that she can do this area perfectly fine and she can't so <laughs> but yeah wow it's more of a uh, a check in a lore thing rather than like what you said. That actually would have been really cool though, or like if it would sometimes flicker and you would take the uh, the dot damage. Um, speaking of, we're gonna have a little run right here. Um, so Reeve will heal you, and normally you're taking damage to this area. So if we're reaving an enemy at a specific spot, we can actually just run to the end. So we just gotta be a little careful here. Gotta wait for these guys to spawn. That should be good. So as you can see, I'm taking damage, but Reeve is constantly healing me. And we should be able to get to the end here. There we go. Got it. So now we have uh, Miranda and Morden together. And we're going to leave Zaid behind. I'm sure Zaid will be perfectly fine. But here we go. This is going to be the last auto scroller. Basically, gonna be trying to do this as best as I can because these we don't get an ammo refuel, which isn't great. So, we want to kind of be careful with our uh, ammo usage in this area because we do need a little bit for later on. Kind of hoping for a drop. That's good. Okay. We're gonna have Harbinger spawn right there. We're gonna kill everybody else but Harbinger. Oh, oh, this is a good. Okay, we're fine. Sometimes he likes to get you stuck and kill you, and that's not great. Um, oh, drop damage. Cool. Oh, yeah, oh, we're totally fine. Thank goodness. I killed that guy. All right, we have plenty of ammo. Thank goodness. All right. So you're probably wondering why the collectors were um, kidnapping human colonists, and the reason for that is they are trying to build a uh, oh, Reaper. Um, Reapers are the most dangerous enemies in the galaxy, supposedly wipe out every single intelligent race every 50,000 years, and it's coming to that number, but here is it. Not only is it a Reaper, though. The superstructure is a Reaper. Not just any Reaper. A human reaper I don't know why she didn't say the line there we go <laughs> but yeah we're coming up to the end here by the way um, so we want to get ready on time it should only be another uh, minute or so so we're gonna do this fight really quickly and then we need to shoot all of those tubes or destroy all of them all right so let's see the luck that we get here Okay, got him killed. So now we're gonna basically go into the attack menu. I'm gonna use that there. Use that there. There we go. All four tubes in once. Now we're coming up to the final boss fight. So time is gonna be coming up of when we do the very last inputs. We're going to do the auto save. That's going to give us a better position. Ah, we didn't get it. That's fine. We didn't get the quick kill, but we should be able to still get it here. Time. 
And that was Mass Effect 2. Um, thank you everybody so much for watching. Uh, I do apologize for the tech issue about halfway through the run, but we at least recovered it nicely. I had some practice saves. But yeah, that is Mass Effect 2. Um, this is one of my favorite games, one of my favorite speedruns. I would highly, highly recommend looking into the speedrun. The community is awesome. All the people in it are really nice and will help you out. Um, we have a link to the Bioware speedrun Discord, which is where we funnel all of our information through for this game, the other... Um, um, games of the trilogy dragon age all that stuff um but yeah there's a lot of resources a lot of friendly people that'll help you out if it's not me then mike wave or sanjan um just want to give shout outs to them as well they both helped a whole lot in um learning this run but yeah if you want to follow me um you can follow me at twitch.tv slash demonic robots i do a lot of speed runs that are primarily third person shooters so i do this one i do control i'm gonna be doing the uh the new last of us so Hopefully you enjoy this run, though. I just want to give a special thanks to Speed Stuff for Charity for dealing with my tech issues and also um, allowing me to showcase not one but two games um, off for the marathon. So um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, as you can see, we're ending it at a high note with Miranda dying, and I, I, I can't think of a better place to end it. So I hope everybody has a great rest of your day, and good luck to the rest of the runners for the marathon.